Welcome in, everybody, to yet another episode of The Brett Allen Show. Today we are chatting with very talented actor Brian Thomas Smith. I mean, his filmography, TVography, whatever you want to call it, is massive. Um, he currently stars in United States of Val, which is streaming now and available to watch. Big Bang Theory. I mean, a lot of great movies, a lot of amazing projects. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hey, thanks for having me, Brett. Well, I'm excited to chat with you. And I, the first question I would have to ask is you have been a part of so many great and amazing projects, but what interested you in becoming an actor and becoming a storyteller? Like, was there a defining moment for you where you knew this was something that you wanted to do? Or is it just kind of been progressive over time? Well, um, I, so back in the in the mid nineties, when I was in middle school, I had a video camera and like every weekend we, me and a, a few friends, we would get together for sleepovers and we would just make these hilarious like movies. And I remember saving up and getting a sound mixer. So now we're like putting we're, CDs, like songs from CDs, streaming uh -huh. sound mixer into the VHS, VCR, and, and we're making like, you know, pretty good movies. We were, we would show them around class and in high school. Uh, we did some cool ones. And so I always had this like a passion for it, for sure. And okay. then to, to college, I was um, a film and broadcast major at Central Missouri. Uh, and then I was taking some acting classes as my minor. And that's when I was like, I think I like acting better. Uh, it's so fun being on stage and, and while I was in school in Missouri, I was thinking the whole time, I got to get out to L.A. So summer of 2000, I, I packed up everything I owned. I knew one friend uh, from high school and I drove out and stayed on his couch for a good six months until I, I moved into his room. and We shared a room for two years. Uh, <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, I didn't know much coming out here. I didn't know what I was going to get into. I guess my follow up question would be, was it in West Hollywood where everybody lives and stays <laughs> when they come no, you know it's it's so I, so i didn't like pick where i was going to move uh to okay. <laughs> my friend was living in santa monica so i've always kind of lived on the west side of los okay. angeles and that's where i still live today nice nice I, it's interesting i always it's kind of like a running joke with actors and comedians maybe even that i have the privilege of chatting with like yourself where it's like west hollywood <laughs> five people slammed into an apartment, yeah, yeah. you know, just like the traditional classic story of an actor who so oh. I was talking to somebody the other day, uh, sidetrack here. And I had had somebody else on my show some time ago and they worked together when they both came out to Los Angeles. And one of them was the, a manager of the other at a hotel when they first started out acting. And now they're both <laughs> like super famous. So it's kind of funny. I, I find what, these stories so interesting that's why i ask that because you know oftentimes some people set out to become actors and they just decide i'm gonna move to la and you know i'm gonna give myself five years and then right. if it doesn't work out but then it oftentimes winds up being much longer you know what i'm saying as far as the process so you come out to la you have a friend you crash on his couch you share a room together yeah first job that got you your sag card or that got you like what well, your first official credit yeah well i um it was i struggled early getting representation especially for television and film but i got a commercial agent they're a little easier to get and uh and i booked a couple commercials but the one that got my sag card this is crazy because I used to live with a couple of other actors and and back then when someone had a commercial audition, we all went like three of us. Yeah. Actor. <laughs> That's so and great. We, just, <laughs> we crashed. He was going in, he had a Coors Light audition and we all showed up to crash that one. And while we were waiting to be called into that one, I went down the hallway and I saw this Heineken ad and I just put my name on the list and they called my name and I, I popped into this and, you know, they're like, Hey, what, uh, I don't see your name. And I was like, oh, I was just called today. And they were like, okay, we'll just do it. Then I got a call back uh, and it ended up being a Heineken spot with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, wow. And I wasn't even called in for it. And this was in 2003, I want to think. Um, 
And uh, it was just me and her in this commercial. And it ran everywhere except for the United States. She got paid a million dollars to do it. But I had a whole day on set with her and me as actors. Uh, and I, I just remember that day. I was a must join. I had to join SAG to do the commercial. And I had to pay this big chunk of money. And I was like, I'm working with Jennifer Aniston. It was it was pretty cool. You can still see the commercial on YouTube. It's, it's out yeah, there. Yeah, I'll have to Google that later and check that out. That's so fascinating. Again, I just... These stories, I find them so, it's just, it's crazy because what you do uh, versus what most people might do are so different. The worlds are just completely, it's just night and day from an eight to five job versus like becoming an actor. And I, and I would consider you to be a very successful working actor and even kind of past that as far as getting these long arcs on television shows like United States of Valor, even Big Bang Theory, or just yeah. all the other projects that you've done. Um, so what is it that motivates you to keep doing this? Because, you know, I, I don't like to focus on the rejection part of it, although there might be a part of it. But like, what is it that sort of keeps the engine going, Brian, to say, OK, you know, I'm I'm waking up to live another day, uh, another day to yeah. die as an actor in L.A.? <laughs> It is, it is a, um, it, it can be a brutal business for sure, because there are a lot of those. Um, but I, moving out here, uh, I, I never had a backup plan and I've never thought like, oh, what if, if I don't make it, what can I do? Can I get into you know real estate or something? You know, I, I was a bartender and a server for the first 13 years out here, but the, you know, last 10 years or so, uh, I, I haven't had to open up beer bottles or anything and, and just act. And that's been so cool. And, and it does a lot for your ego when you're financially supporting yourself through your acting career. And, yeah. um, but I, I'm not sad. I, I'm never, I have not had that feeling of like I've made it and it, I've been here for 22 years and I work yeah. all the time and uh, it's my full-time job and it's, and I've done some really cool projects, but I, you know, I, I, I still love, I love being on set. I love working. I love uh, creating a character for a film, for a television show, for a commercial, whatever that is. Uh, the hard part is uh, putting yourself on tape, um, uh, the audition process over and over again, being told no, getting really close, thinking you get it, and then you get told no. But when you do get those yeses, it, it's like, this is why I do all the other things. This, I mean, we used to have to drive around to all these auditions and wait and and, and go over the scene in your head a million times. Now it's a little different because of COVID. We put ourselves on tape. Um, but yeah, it's, I've never had a backup plan. This is it. This is what I'm doing. And I, I love it. And I yeah. hope every day when I'm jaded, you know. I know. It's interesting. Yeah. Again, back in the day, driving from maybe Century City to the Valley or to some West Side, you know, trying to find parking and, getting in line with 20 other people that look like you uh, and maybe one or two that are like the archetype that aren't like you. Um, but it's interesting and, and you've created a life for you. And I like that what you said about not having a backup plan. I mean, cause I was talking to somebody a while ago and they, you know, the, I, they thought to themselves, if I don't make it, well, I'll go to college. I'll stay in LA um, and then just kind of live my life here. Uh, but I like your side of this too, where you just kind of decided mentally and, and put it out there in the universe, so to speak, that this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to make this work. And I think that's part of how I would define success in your industry is just kind of just saying, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? Whether it's yeah. big or small, whether it's something big or just a commercial, but I think it's all at the same time at the end of the day, at least from my perspective, it's all work. Mm -hmm. It's all work. And the work is, is the best part of the job. Um, it's, it's always, it's always interesting because it's always different and it's always new people and it's, it's a new role, new project. And it's always, it's a lot of fun. Um, so I've enjoyed my, my journey, I should say. Yeah, absolutely. So out of all the things that you have done, is there one particular thing that stands out to you as an actor that you just go, man, this was really pivotal in my career or this was a big turning point? Uh, yeah, there's a couple. There's two. I mean, one was uh, 
I when I booked the Twelfth Man pilot. This was a Dan Fogelman um, who created This Is Us. Um, he's a giant now. He's he's uh, doing great work, and he uh, this was his second pilot, and this was in two thousand and five or six, and uh, they didn't have a a twelfth man for this Fox pilot. They had tested nine other actors. They needed an actor six three or taller because he's an NBA bench warmer. And my brother and I had done the Amazing Race, and this a casting associate was just scrolling through pictures of actors that were taller than six three, and saw me and was like, "Hey, that's one of the brothers from the Amazing Race. I'm going to bring him in." That was a Monday morning. I came back after reading with them to read with the producers and Dan Fogelman and, and director Chris Koch, and and then they brought me back Tuesday to do some work. I tested for the pilot on Wednesday, 20th Century Fox that said no to nine other actors. They said yes to me. I did a chemistry read on Thursday with another actor who had already been cast. Friday, I have my network test at Fox and uh, they all shake my hands afterwards and say, you're our 12th man. And uh, I had I had a little tiny manager. I didn't ha have any agency or anything. And I couldn't get one because everybody was like, you don't have enough credits. And uh, next thing you know, I'm the lead for a Fox pilot in 2006 when everybody was watching network television. And I was going to dinners for with every agency wanted me. Um, I was 27 years old, uh, the lead of a show. The pilot did not get picked up. They held it for a year so no one else could take it. Uh, and then it just kind of fizzled away. But it got me in the game. I was going to acting classes and not auditioning and being with my peers in class who were just working all the time. So talented. These actors were amazing and they all worked. Uh, and I was just sitting there like, I can't wait to get my auditions to try to, you know, to get in there and, and feel like I'm part of the game. I'm sitting on the sidelines and that, wow. that job got me in the game, at, at least for auditions. I didn't book anything right afterwards for a while. I, uh, it just the right role. I was green. It it, it, it didn't happen, but um, it got me in the game. Well, things have clearly worked out for you now again with United States of Al, which is a fantastic show. Of course, Big Bang Theory, as we wrap here, I would be remiss without mentioning this. That show, I think, was lightning in a bottle. Um, from what I understand, a lot of people didn't think it was going to take or launch or people yeah. would like it. And it became it, it outdid friends on many different levels, which is huge. Um, any fond memories or experiences from that show? I mean, that has to be a highlight for you in your career, I would think. Oh, for sure. Uh, it's, it was such a, a cool experience being part of that show from, I was on the season three finale, uh, trivia question. Who was the other actor that their first episode was season three finale? Um, that would be Maya, Maya, uh, Blalik. She, um, she, her and I were, we had the same ep first episode together and she went on to be a series regular, but there wasn't enough, I guess, room for me to be a series regular, but they had loved what they did with my character, bringing me back all the way through season 12. Yes. Uh, and that, I, I would say that's the other job that, um, that really helped me out as an actor, I would say mentally, because even that first episode that I did where I'm on the roof with the guys and they, I think they're going to blow up the moon with the laser I just remember doing this in front of a live audience. Um, I'm the, this is my first episode and the audience is laughing at everything. <laughs> Every line I have was a joke. And, you know, this big dumb idiot who, who was super excited to see this laser thing. And, and I just remember after, you know, the, the buzzer rang and we, we cut Kaylee Cuoco was like, dude, you are killing it. This nice. audience loves you. And I was like, I felt, like I was just one of the gang. I felt like I could be doing this every week, just like Jim Parsons and, and Johnny and, and everybody in Canal. And they were all so friendly and cool. And every time I showed up on set, whether it was a year later, two years later, sometimes uh, before they brought me back, everybody, all the other actors were like, Hey, Brian, you're back. Hey, what's up? And it was just, it just boom, getting right into it. It was really cool to see, you know, the, <laughs> how much success the show had for, from season three was kind of like, are we getting picked up to, yeah. I mean, you know where it went, the, the most, most episodes ever for a multi-camera. It's, it's such a special show to be a part of. I love it. Well, again, my friend, uh, 
Brian, I'm a huge fan. I love your work. Even all the independent projects that you've been a part of, the big stuff, it all is just really fantastic. And if you haven't seen either one of these shows or the others that we've talked about, be sure to check them out. Um, They're just absolutely spectacular. Um, what can we expect next? I know you've got a lot of things going on and, and what you can share with our audience. Yeah, man, this has been a great year. I uh, uh, not only have a, I had two kids over the pandemic, but uh, I've been working a lot too. And um, I, I'm going to be in this new Apple Plus show. Uh, yes. come, I think it comes out in November. It's called Bad Monkey. Um, yes, I've heard about that. It's going to be huge. It was so cool. Uh, Vince Vaughn is, is going to just... I don't know if you call it a comeback. I don't think he left, but he is vintage Vince Vaughn in this. He's very he, particular about what he does. He doesn't just do anything. Yeah. And Bill Lawrence is the, the executive producer from Ted Lasso. And so you just know it's going to hit the mark with comedy and heart. And it's just going to be a really uh, well produced show. And I, I'm going to be in three episodes uh, and I have a couple of funny scenes with Vince Vaughn. I got to improv with him, which was just a dream come true. Nice. Um, yeah, and I'm going to be uh, in this new uh, Nickelodeon Paramount Plus series called uh, The Loud House. It used to be an animated ca- uh, cartoon. and now Oh, it's- yeah, we had cast on last year from the Christmas special. That's great. Yeah. They're doing another one. Well, they're doing a TV series now. Nice. And first season, and I play Mr. Bolhoffner, the, the Lincoln's um, school teacher. So I'll be recurring on that. That'll be a fun job. And uh, I found out yesterday I booked a guest star on NCIS. I start that next week. So nice. Uh, 20 yeah. years that show has been running and I've never booked a job on it. <laughs> and I got in. So well, timing is everything in this business. Well, sure. Congratulations on the kids and sure. uh, much success that you've had so far and all the things uh, that wait for you in the future. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brian, for hanging out today. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me anytime.